Alrighty, y'all, welcome back to another video. And in this one, what I'm gonna be doing is updating the functionality for this timer component. However, before we get into that, I wanna mention a few changes that I made between the last video and this one. The first one is, you may already notice it, I added some styling to this history table. So you see, I styled these statuses and just uh, formatted some things right here. And again, this is all CSS, so I didn't really feel like I wanted to record it because, I don't know, it just felt like I wouldn't be teaching you anything new. And there is one more change as well, pop open my source code. In addition to this use pending run, which we wrote, I think in the last video, which basically gets the most recent pending run, as you can tell by the hook name, I also wrote this use latest run. And as you can see right here, all it does is it returns the most recent run. And if there's no run, for example, you first boot up the app, it's just gonna return undefined. So again, like the history table, it's pretty similar to the code we wrote before. So uh, yeah, just wanted to save you all some time. But anyways, on that note, let's go ahead and pop open this timer component. And before we start writing any code, let's just go over the logic of exactly how this is gonna work. So the way that this is gonna work is first, whenever you first boot open this app for the very first time, of course, you're not gonna have any runs at all. So at that point in time, I wanna just set this equal to zero. Now, whenever you click this button and you send off that request, you are gonna have what's called a pending run, AKA a run where you haven't received a response yet. Now, of course, you can probably guess what we're gonna be doing for the timer right here. Whenever you have a pending run, this is just gonna display how long that run is taking. Kind of like a stopwatch, it's gonna be updating in real time. So that's the easy part, but a couple unique situations that we have to look out for is this. First of all, if we ever get an error whenever we click this button, then what we're gonna do is we'll just reset this time to zero, zero, zero. And again, we'll have an error, hopefully we don't get it ever, but if we ever send this request and that server, that core server is down or I don't know, maybe we formatted the block in the wrong shape or something, then we'll just go ahead and reset this to zero. And the last kind of uh, weird situation is, well, it's not even that weird, but what we'll do is whenever we have a pending run and it exceeds 10 seconds, then we'll consider that run timed out. And for this time right here, we'll just have it set to 10 seconds, basically saying that uh, this is the maximum amount of time, the timer won't ever exceed 10 seconds. Now the last situation is whenever our run comes back, so it's no longer pending, but we then have a successful run, then what I wanna do is just display the time of this last successful run right here. So it sounds like quite a bit of logic, but it actually should be pretty simple in our code. So let's just go ahead and get started. So first thing, let me go ahead and import everything that I'm gonna need. And after this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a constant for that timeout. Since it's never going to change, timeout seconds will always say that the timeout is 10 seconds. And now let me just go ahead and write some things that we're going to need. So for this value right here, we'll have this in a state variable. And I'll just name it uh, time. Keep it nice and simple. So const time, and we'll set it with set time. And this is equal to use state and we'll initialize this to zero off the bat and then this is of course a number type that and all right so another thing that we're going to need is dispatch and oh he's just copy this too lazy to type one sentence so we're going to need our dispatch statement now the reason that we need this is because if our run ever times out then we'll just go ahead and dispatch that updated status to set it to run status timeout right from here. And then from here, what I need is that latest run. And remember, I said that I wrote the hook in between the last video and this one. And of course, this is because whenever we have a successful run, we're going to be displaying the time from the last successful run right here. And then the last thing that we need before we get into the good stuff is just our runs. And I'll say use selector. And that is get runs. And the reason that we need this is because we need to be able to listen for when the runs change. Because when the runs change, 
we want to be able to say something, okay, I have some errors, but we want to be able to say like, whenever the runs change, if the last run was successful, then go ahead and get the time and set the state to that time right there. So sounds a bit tricky, but I'll break this up in this kind of way. I'll use a use effect statement, and I'm gonna be breaking up the logic in two main chunks. The first chunk is dealing with a pending run. And this is a little bit uh, trickier, I would say, because we have to update that timer kind of in real time. Now the other use effect chunk of logic, this is gonna deal with everything but a pending run. So again, whenever that run comes back as either an error or we time out or it's successful, we wanna be able to update that timer based on that logic. So again, one chunk for the pending run, one chunk for everything else. So for the pending run, let me do this. I'll say use effect. And for the logic for this, the first thing I'm gonna do is I am just gonna check if the, excuse me, if the latest run status, and again, I need this question mark right here because we actually don't even know if we're gonna have a latest run. For example, whenever we first boot open the app, we're not gonna have any runs at all. So I'll just do latest run question mark. If we do have one, check the status and see if it is not equal to run status pending. And for this, I'll just go ahead and return. So the logic in here, like I said, this is gonna be all dealing with the pending run. So if we don't have a pending run, we'll pretty much just bypass this entire logic. Now, if we do have a pending run, then of course, what we wanna do is basically update that timer in real time. So in order to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an interval that's gonna run every 10 milliseconds. We can have it run like probably every single millisecond, but I don't even think the human eye can, you know, tell the difference of all those. So I'll show you exactly how this is gonna work right now. So I'm gonna create an interval and this is gonna be equal to set interval. And this would just be an anonymous function that is gonna run every 10 milliseconds. Now, before I even write the logic for that, what I wanna do is just make sure in this return statement right here that we are clearing that interval. So I'll say clear interval interval right here. And this is just part of the uh, React logic in use effect, this hook right here. Whenever you have a return statement, it's automatically gonna call this function to uh, yeah, pretty much just a clean up function. And on that note, let's go ahead and hop into this set interval logic and we'll write the meat and potatoes of everything. So the logic that I'm gonna write in here is this. Every 10 milliseconds, we essentially need to calculate the updated time that it's taking this request. So in order to do this, what I'm gonna do is first, since I wanna calculate everything in milliseconds, I'll say ms difference and this is equal to new date dot get time. And this new date is essentially equal to right now. And this get time just allows us to work in milliseconds rather than like a string formatted date or anything like this. So from right now, this moment in time, what I wanna do is subtract the latest runs request time. So this is gonna give us the window in milliseconds that that run is taking. And just because on our UI we display that in seconds, I'll go ahead and convert it right now. So to convert it into seconds, we say ms difference, the modulus operator 60000 or zero, <laughs> and then over 1000. Again, this is just because this is how many milliseconds are in a minute. So on that note, this is gonna basically allow us to work in seconds, which is gonna make everything much easier. Because with this, the first thing that we wanna check is, is the time that this request is taking in seconds, first of all, does it exceed our timeout amount? Is it taking longer than 10 seconds? If so, what we wanna do is just set this run status to timeout. Now to do this, what we could do, and this is probably gonna work basically all the time, what we could do is take this latest run right here, which is pending, and we'll just update it in Redux to be run status timeout instead of run status pending. However, just to kind of handle any weird edge cases, for example, if we have a pending run and we shut down TNBOS, or maybe for some reason our data got messed up and we have two pending runs, 
what I'll do instead is I'm just gonna update all pending runs to timeout. Now again, I don't think this is ever gonna be needed, but it's just a weird edge case where most of the time this is just gonna update this one pending run, but it'll help clean up any old data that we have. And to do that, I first need to get all the pending runs, which like I said, most of the time is just gonna be equal to one run, but object.values, I'll go ahead and get those runs. And then I'm just gonna filter those were the status those runs pending right there so again this is going to give us all of our pending runs and now for each of those just iterate through them and we'll say for for each of those i'm just going to dispatch the set run I import this hopefully and for this we can just spread out the run and update the status to be run status timeout just like this and this should be a comma and all right so again usually in pretty much like a hundred percent of the time this is just gonna be timing out this one latest run but like I said just to cover all of our bases might as well clean up any other ones as well. And then last but not least, what we'll do for the timer is we're gonna set that equal to this timeout. So I'm gonna say right here, set time to timeout seconds. All right, so again, that block of code was how we're gonna handle if our pending run exceeds 10 seconds. However, if it doesn't, then all we need to do is we need to set the time on the timer equal to this value right here, however many seconds it's taking. And then to finish up this hook, all we need to do is set our dependencies. And then there we go. And actually for this latest run, we'll just put a question mark right here because we can't ensure that we actually do have a latest run. But once we do, it'll pass in the request time, the status and the runs. And yeah, logic looking good. So again, this is gonna take care of the pending runs. Now I just need to write one more use effect statement to pretty much handle every other run aside from a pending run. So use effects, let me just go ahead and write the boilerplate. So again, in here, what we're gonna do is we'll look at the latest run and if it's not pending, we'll say if it's an error, then we're gonna set the time to zero. If it's a timeout, then we're gonna set the time to 10 Otherwise, if you have a successful run, then just display on that timer the time it took. So I'm gonna write logic in here to say, if you don't have a latest run, we can just bypass this. And also, if you do have a latest run, but the status of that is equal to run status pending, then we can just go ahead and break out of this early. No need to uh, write any code in here. And then we can just start handling all of those cases. So first, if the latest run status is an error, so a run status error, then what we want to do in that case, we said is set the timer to zero, and then we can just return because uh, below here is just checking for those other statuses. And I can just copy this too. So this is what we're gonna do in the case of an error. Now in the case of a timeout, if that run was timed out, then what we're gonna do is set it equal to 10. And just to make sure if we ever change that timeout, then we don't have to go back in here and change it again. I'll just use that constant timeout seconds. Now, lastly, this is the case if we have a successful run, because again, we're breaking out for a pending run, an error, and a timeout. So this logic is only gonna fall through here for a successful run. And just like before, what we're gonna do is set the timer equal to how long it took. So we need to calculate the milliseconds from this. And to do this, it's the latest run dot response time. And I'm also gonna have the exclamation mark because the response time is actually, as you can see, it's a number or, or null. Now we can guarantee that we have a number here because for every successful run, we always have a response time. So that's why I can safely add this exclamation mark. And then for the latest runs response time, 
to get the actual time of how long that took, you just subtract the latest runs request time. And that's gonna give you the period, basically how long it took. And from here, we just have to convert it to seconds. So to do that, it's the same as this one, actually. So milliseconds to seconds is just, like I said before, uh, modulus 6,000 over 1,000. And then last but not least, we just need to set the time in that state variable right here. And let's see, update my dependencies. That's the only thing we need, pass in the latest run. And last but not least, what I need to do here is actually instead of displaying our temp data, we are just gonna display that time that we've been setting. Again, the set time is equal to, or it's setting the value for this variable right here. And also, I want to make sure that we always display three digits. So I'll say to fixed three, and this is gonna give us our millisecond accuracy. And I believe that that's the only thing that we need to do. Let me just clean this up here. So apps, speed test, store, get runs, and sort this. I gotta make sure all my imports are nice and clean. And now, let's go ahead and uh, test this thing. So check it out. All right, so this is looking pretty good already because my latest run in Redux was 0.895 seconds, and it is displaying the time from the latest successful run. That is what we wanted. Now let me just go ahead and, all right, it's so looking pretty sweet. Uh, I actually, let's do this just to test the timeout. So these successful runs, oh, this is pretty sweet. All right, they're appearing successfully. However, I wanna purposely time something out. And the easiest way we can do this is just to go in the listener and we'll say for that Pong listener, which is the response, this is whenever we receive a successful response, we'll set it equal to success. I'll just comment this out to kind of like simulate us never receiving our response at all. And then hopefully this should time out. So, all right. Pop open Redux. All right. So pending, pending, latest run is pending. And this button disabled state is uh, working good too. Shouldn't be able to click it while we have a run pending. All right, beautiful. So this is our uh, proper timeout status. Again, this should display 10 seconds. That's exactly what we're going for. So now let me just go ahead and revert my code. And all right, looking good. And again, sometimes whenever I update the source code, this uh, Redux tool kind of is like, uh, gets a little lost, I guess. So I just need to close the inspector tools, or the dev tools and pop that open again. You don't have to close down the entire app, but there you go. All right. So I guess our record so far is 0.337 seconds, pretty fast. And by the way, just for kind of reference, I'm in New York City right now, uh, both my iMac and my MacBook, and my core server is in Oregon. So both the request and response are both going through the Oregon server. So yeah, not bad time. And uh, okay, in the next video, now that we have that taken care of, what I'll do is probably just clean up a few things, maybe add some custom font. But I mean, really, we got our working app. It's just uh, all improving it from here on out. So good job, everyone. And I'll see y'all next time.